الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بسك الله عز وجل with his lofty attributes and beautiful names to bless this gathering to make it a gathering a beneficial gathering and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make it a means of our elevation to get closer to him and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to purify our intentions for his sake to proceed Alhamdulillah we have started the book As-Sunnah or Kitab al-Sunnah or Sharq al-Sunnah lil Imam al-Muzani and this book is on the topic of Aqeedah and the belief system of the Muslim and what they should believe regarding Allah Azza wa Jal his angels, his books, and all of the others. And Alhamdulillah, we have taken the first lesson and we're going to continue from where we left off. And uh, we've mentioned a number of things to do with Aqeedah, the definition of Aqeedah. Likewise, we have mentioned the sources that a person takes from the Aqeedah and the reference point they go back to when it comes to their belief system. And we have also mentioned that the reason why the author rahimahullah authored this book and he produced this masterpiece this very important text is because some people said th things regarding him about al-qadr and him not believing in the decree and the preordainment of allah Azzawajal. and he then answered that question and clarified everything in this book inshallah we are going to cover or maybe review what we have covered so far and we'll start from where he says الواحد الصمد ضرورة إثبات الصفات بلا تمثيل ولا تعطيل The obligation of affirming for Allah Azza wa Jal His sifat, His attributes without negating them or distorting their meanings so believing them as they are as they come in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he Rahimullah says Bismillah after praising Allah Azza wa Jal and sending salutations upon the Prophet that Allah Alhamdulillah ahaqu man dhukir wa awla man shukir wa alayhi uthni that after praising Allah with the praise of Allah the one that deserves to be mentioned or to be thanked wa awla man shukir the first to be thanked and the one that we appreciate his blessings wa alayhi uthni and him we praise he says, Al-Wahid Al-Samad, Allah Azza wa Jal is the eternal, i.e. the one that is self-sufficient and the one that is sufficient enough to meet the needs of his creation. لَيْسَ لَهُ صَاحِبَةٌ وَلَا وَلَدْ Allah Azza wa Jal does not have a female companion nor offspring. He negates that from Allah Azza wa Jal. جَلَّ عَنِ الْمَفِيلِ he is above having any resemblance or anyone like him. فَلَا شَبِيهَ لَهُ وَلَا عَدِيلِ He has no one that is like him and that resembles him. There is no being that is like Allah Azza wa Jal in his names, attributes, power, his sifat. السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ The most hearing, البصير, the one that sees everything. Al-Alim Al-Khabir, the most knowledgeable and the one that is well acquainted with everything. I.e. he has deep knowledge of everything that Allah Azza wa has created and everything that exists in this world. I think this is where we stopped in the last lesson. And in this lesson, inshallah, we're going to continue from where we left off, which is Alin ala arshihi. So here, with this sentence, the author, rahimahullah, mentions Al-Ulu Lillah. The... Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal being above his creation, him rising over the throne and being above his creation. And this is a sifa that is fi'liya, uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal is above his creation and he's not mixed or within his creation. He's above them physically, however he is with them by his knowledge. And we said that the sifat, the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal are divided into two and they are sifat fi'liya and sifat dhatiya. Sifat dhatiya are the attributes that are or the characteristics that Allah Azza wa Jal is always described with, i.e. they cannot be detached from Allah. Allah is as-sami'ah. He always hears. 
Al-Basir, he always sees. Al-Alim, his knowledge encompasses everything. He's, he has knowledge over all things. And that cannot be detached from him. It is from his essence. And you have then Sifat al fiiliya The Sifat that Allah Azawajal does whatever he wishes when he wants to. Like for example, an nuzul Allah Azawajal descending, al ulu Allah Azawajal being over the throne, and he's always over the throne of course. However, there are times that Allah Azawajal comes down to the lowest heaven, and this is Sifa uh, Fi'liya, i.e. a Sifa that Allah Azawajal describes himself with. However, if he wishes to, he comes down in a manner that befits his majesty. His majesty. And this is where we have the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That Allah comes down and descends from the heavens, from above the throne Every night, in the last part of every night, the last third of every single night And he says, who from my creation is going to ask for forgiveness so that I may forgive them Who is going to ask so that I may give them what they're asking for. Who is going to supplicate to me so that I might accept their supplication and so on. So Al-Ulu Lillah is the uh, uh, rising of Allah Azawajal over his throne. And this is mentioned in the Quran, in many places in the Quran, specifically in seven different ayat about Allah rising over the throne. And from those ayat is where Allah Azza wa Jal mentions uh, He has created the heavens in six days and then Allah Azza wa Jal rose over the throne. So the throne is the biggest creation that Allah Azza wa Jal has created. And the angels carry it. As our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, it is the biggest creation that Allah Azza wa Jal has created. The angels carry it. And we have to understand there is a difference between Al Kursi and Al Arshi. Al Arsh. Al Arsh is the throne of Allah Azawajal, where Allah Azawajal rises over in a manner that befits, befits His Majesty and that we cannot describe or like it to the humans, rising over something. Likewise, you have Al Kursi, which is the footstool of Allah, of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is, of course, lower than the Arsh. The Kursi of Allah Azza wa Jal covers the, between the earth and the heavens, i.e., it is so huge that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran that it is in between the heavens and the earth, the distance between the heavens and the earth. The Arsh and the throne is even bigger than that, as Allah uh, tells us in the Quran. And our Prophet tells us. There are also many different ayat regarding Allah being over the throne. Is one of them. Do you feel secure from Allah, from the one that is above that the one that is in the heavens, i.e., above his creation. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us in a hadith, in an authentic hadith, that he asked a female servant, a slave girl, where Allah is. And she said, he said, Ain Allah, she said, Fis sama, he's in the heavens, i.e., over the throne. Meaning that Allah is above us, he's above us. And this is something which of course is a perfection for Allah Allah being over his throne or above his creation is a sifa which is a sifa of a sifa tul kamal a perfected or a perfection for Allah because when someone is higher logically of course and shari'an as well when someone is higher than another person that means the hierarchy makes a difference. They are higher than that person in position, in power, in so on. Allah is over his throne. Likewise, Allah tells us in the Quran, 
to him Allah Azzawajal rises the good word i.e. the uh, good statements that we utter and say they rise to him and the angels carry the good deeds and the good statements that we um, perform or fulfill or say or carry out to Allah they take it to Allah also in a hadith the Prophet ﷺ tells us that the good person, the good soul, when Allah Azzawajal takes that soul and that person passes away, the good soul would be raised to Allah, i.e. would be ascended to Allah, and the angels will take it to the heavens. Meaning that uh, Allah Azzawajal to him, he takes everything good to him, to the heavens. And Ahl Sunnah, the people of Sunnah, believe that Allah Azzawajal rises over his throne in a manner that is suitable and befitting for him. And others have rejected that and that they say that Allah Azzawajal does not rise over the throne and that he is, we cannot say that because if we say that then we are resembling Allah to his creation, which is of course wrong. And they negate that and they deny it by saying that if we like if we say that then we are likening Allah to his creation. So Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us that Ilayhi Yasadul Kalimu Tayyibu Wal Amalu Salihu Yarfa'u Aamintum Man fi Samai A Yaksifa Bikumul Aud. And of course the seven ayats we have mentioned. So he then says, Alin ala arshihi, Allah Zujil exalted above, is exalted and he's above his throne in his essence. Wahuwa danin bi'ilmihi, but at the same time, danin bi'ilmihi, he is close to his creation with his knowledge, i.e., he sees them, he observes them, he watches them, he hears them, he accepts the dua of the distressed he accepts that the one who seeks refuge in Allah he accepts the one that is turning to him in repentance and he is with us by his knowledge he sees every movement that we take everything that we say he records it he records it and he Azawajal has given the angels the duty to record all of the deeds whether good or bad Allah Azawajal knows what we go through in our lives. He is very close to us to the extent that Allah Azawajal mentions in the Quran, We're closer to the human being than the Dijugal vein, the vein that runs down your throat or neck. Allah Azawajal is closer to you than that. And He knows you. And He, in the Raya Azawajal, says, that he is with with us. He sees us. Wherever you are, Allah Azawajal is well aware of what we do, and he is and he is seeing and hearing is limitless. It does not have a limit. As far as there's only a certain limit that we have when it comes to hearing others or listening or concentrating on the conversation two different people are having and Allah Azawajal revealed an ayah in the Quran when a woman came to the Prophet and Aisha was in a different room and Allah Azawajal then revealed this ayah regarding the matter she was complaining about which was of course her husband so this woman came to the Prophet and she was complaining to the Prophet and Aisha was in a different room and she could only hear the mumbling and you know the voice However, she could not hear what was being said clearly. Allah Azza wa Jalla heard it from فوق سبع سماوات and he revealed قد سمع الله قول التي تجادلك في زوجها Indeed, Allah heard the statement or the speech of the woman that was complaining to you regarding her husband. وتشتكي إلى الله والله يسمع تحاوركما and Allah heard your conversation. Allah is not hawrakma in Allah Samir al Basir. Allah sees and hears. Aisha said, SubhanAllah, I was in the next room and I could not hear what they were saying. And Allah Azawajal heard it from above the seven heavens and revealed this ayah to the Prophet immediately. 
this shows that Allah and it highlights the power of Allah, how Allah sees and observes and watches us, and that He is with us by His knowledge. وَهُوَ دَانٍ بِعِلْمِهِ مِنْ خَلْقِهِ مِنْ خَلْقِهِ So Allah Azza wa combined the sifa of being above the throne and being close to His servants. Being close and near to His servants. Meaning that if we say that Allah is above the throne, that does not mean He is far away from us or He doesn't hear us. If we say that Allah hears us, it doesn't mean that His sight or hearing is like the humans. We combine both and we say that Allah is above the throne, but He is with us. Physically, He is above the throne and He is with us by His knowledge. Then, Rahimullah Ta'ala, the Shaykh, uh, talks about another important matter that the Muslim has to believe, and that is an essential part of the aqeed of the Muslim, and that's Al Qada'u Al Qadr. Al Qada'u Al Qadr, the decree and the preordainment. This is from the belief system of the Muslim and it is a must for every single Muslim to believe in the Qadr. And we will talk about what the Qadr is inshallah. He says, Ahata ilmuhu bil umur. Allah's knowledge has encompassed everything, all of the affairs, the preordainments, everything that happens in this world, everything that occurs and takes place in this world, Allah Azawajal has encompassed the full details of how it happens, where it happens, when it happens, why it happens, and so on. Because he's the one that has decreed it in the first place. And he, Azawajal tells us, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ The humans do not wish or will accept after the will of Allah, accept what Allah Azawajal wants. They only work and carry out their duties according to what Allah Azawajal wants and how He wants and when He wants or where He wants. So all of that is something which is specific for Allah. And Allah Azawajal manages the affairs of the servants. He's the one that takes the soul. He's the one that brings new blood to the world. He's the one that uh, controls the world. He is. He has the dominion, complete dominion over the world. He's the sovereignty, the, the one that everything goes back to. He's the one that is not asked what he does. He's not asked about what he does, but he asks the humans why they do and what they do. لا يسأل عن ما يفعل وهم يسألون. Allah Azawajal is never questioned. His power and his magnificence and his sovereignty is above everything else. And he does whatever he wishes. And he is the one that created the shar and the khair. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا And Allah Azawajal does that for a reason and for a purpose. He does not do or carry out what happens in this world aimlessly or without a purpose behind every incident and every occurrence, everything that takes place in this world, whether it's something good that ha uh, benefits the person or something evil that harms the person. And of course, the, we have to remember that there's nothing evil, 100% evil in Islam. There's some sort of khayr with that. Allah Azawajal is testing some people, the floods that take place. There is some benefit for the humans within it. Even though generally it is something which Allah uh, causes to happen and it harms the person. Lakin Allah does it for a reason. He does it for a reason. And this is something all of us should have to believe in. Al Qadr is a preordainment. And the actions of Allah Azawajal all go back to Al Qadr. And the Muslim has to believe in Al Qadr. He says, Rahimullah, Ahad ilmuhu bil umur. Allah's knowledge has encompassed everything that happens. This knowledge is, of course, uh, we cannot comprehend this, how he does this. It is something we have to believe in. And it's from the pillars of Iman. And he fulfills within his creation the things that have already been preordained. And Allah tells us, uh, the Prophet ﷺ tells us in hadith, everything that occurs in this world has been ordained over 50,000 years ago before the human being was born. 50,000 years ago before that person was born. And when a person 
is in the womb of their mother. They go through stages. Allah Zawajal tells us during the fourth stage, after they reach 120 nights in their mother's womb, and they are now going to the angel will come and uh, create that person by the will of Allah Azza wa Allah sends and the angel breathes the spirit and the soul into the human being and the, sh the facial uh, shape or the how this person is going to look is now shaped Allah tells the angel to write down four things what that person will eat his risk his provision his sustenance what that person will earn what they will have in this life his ajal and his lifespan the person's lifespan how long they're going to live when they're going to burn all of that is pre-recorded it's not something the human being can change like what if a person commits a suicide and they kill themselves or a person takes a weapon and kills another person have they caused that yes they're going to be blamed for that and that's part of qadr so there is irada for the person the person has been given the free will like in everything is preordained at the same time everything is recorded in the books and Allah wanted that person and he decreed that person would commit a suicide Lakin, can the person say, I am I'm not going to be blamed for that or I'm innocent if I do that because everything is decreed by Allah. No, you can't because everything has a sabab. Allah gave you the free will. You have the free will to do whether you want to do good or bad. And if we were to say that, I'm not going to be blamed for what I do because it's already been decreed by Allah, then that would mean there is no qadr and anyone would do what they want to do and um, this is how the people of al qadriya uh, sorry al jabariya say that a person is compelled and they have no free will meaning that everyone is compelled to do what they do so if you hurt someone you take the wealth of someone or you uh, harm someone that's already decreed and this is incorrect. So Allah Zawajal has fulfilled his decree and his preordainment within his creation. <coughs> he then says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُونِ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُونِ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ Allah Zawajal knows خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُونِ This the deceitful eye meaning the one that looks at haram and that the one that uh, gaze at haram things he knows it even though a person might be by themselves or they have their own seclusion in private Allah sees that and whatever is hidden in the, in the hearts the secrets what you're thinking your thoughts your plans and your intention Allah is well aware of that this is the level of his knowledge that he's well aware and well acquainted with what you're thinking of what you're planning to do what you have in your heart the intentions you have and the creation act in accordance with his knowledge with his knowledge i.e. whatever that Allah has decreed and وَنَافِذُونَ لِمَا خَلَقَهُمْ لَهُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ وَشَرٍ And they carry out whatever they have been created for, whether good or bad, i.e. خَيْرٍ وَشَرٍ is the irada of Allah Azza wa Jal. A person will, of course, every single person has a place in Jannah or the Hellfire. As the Prophet says in Hadith, that all of you, i.e. the Sahaba, every single person, and by extension, of course, we were included in that. Every single person, every human being, the Allah Azza wa Jalla has already decreed their place or their abode in the hereafter, whether it's going to be Jannah or the Hellfire. So He already knows it. 
And then the Sahaba said, well, Oh, Messenger of Allah, أَفَلَا نَتَّكِلْ What is the point of us working, striving hard, putting this effort? Should we give up and wait for that? The come because Allah Azawajal has already preordained that and it's been decreed. What's the point of us working and you know tiring ourselves? And he said to them, Work and strive hard because every person has every person has been Allah Azawajal made easy for that person what they have been created for, whether you've been created for the hellfire or the Jannah. You're going to be from the inhabitants of the Jannah or the Hellfire. Allah Azawajal has already created that. Tafadil Zakri. Allah Azawajal has already pre-decreed that and it's going to happen. And your deeds will indicate which one you're going to be from. If you're a good person that works hard, that stays away from the haram, that abstains from the forbidden things, and you fulfill your duties as a Muslim, then you're working for Jannah. And Allah will make it easy for you to uh, traverse upon that path and continue like that until you meet Him. If you are a person from the people of Hellfire, the bad deeds and the bad actions and the muharramat will be made easy for you. And you will always be engaged in things that cause the displeasure of Allah. Continue to commit sins. And that does not mean we judge people based on their actions. We don't. We say that. A person's place in the hereafter is in the hands of Allah. As long as they are Muslim and say they say La ilaha illallah, we don't judge a person and say because he does not pray or because I mean, Salah is of course uh, something that takes the person out of the fold of Islam. Like in other sins, a person that drinks, a person that commits zina, a person that uh, is far away from Allah Azawajal and they're distant from Allah and they don't fulfill the duties that Allah had made obligatory upon them and they commit sins we cannot judge that person and say they're going to be from the people of the fire why? because this is Allah knows maybe this person will repent to Allah maybe this person will uh, turn back from this path and become a person that is close to Allah likewise we don't say that person is from the people of Jannah that is only for Allah because this person can change and they can end up committing a sin and they leave the fold of Islam or they commit the kabair and Allah uh, takes them to the hellfire so we say that this is in the hands of Allah however we say that Alhamdulillah this person is upon the correct path and they're working for Jannah and we ask Allah for thabat and steadfastness and being firm on this deed and for others. So this is the aqidah and the belief of al sunnah that we don't um, we don't say we don't say or believe that this person is either from the people of hellfire or the jinn. Okay, that is for Allah alone. Like we fear for that person, we fear that they might end up going to the hellfire if they keep committing these sins. And for the good person, we hope that Allah Azawajal takes them to Jannah if they die upon that. So Allah Azawajal, the author says, They carry out what they have been created for, whether good or bad, whether good or evil. So this evil is not pure evil in and of itself. There is always a hikmah behind why Allah created the sharr. There's a hikmah behind that and an objective. So this irada, we said that al-irada is of two types. A person having the free will. Or the irada to Allah Allah wanting something from the human beings. There's irada shar'iyya and there's irada kawniyya. Irada kawniyya or irada shar'iyya means that Allah wants, for example, ease for the person in the sharia. He wants comfortable or he wants ease and gentleness for the person. And this is why he says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعَزْرَ مَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ Allah wants something for the person. Allah wants 
is for the person and this is in the legislation the Quran and the Sunnah that Allah does not wish to punish the human beings so this is the want irada shari'i then there's irada kawniya and irada kawniya is that uh, what Allah Azawajal has already decreed he wanted that for this person and that cannot be changed whatever the person does does that mean we blame Allah for that? No, because Allah already knew that this person's going to end up like this and he's an evil person. He is someone that has deserves to be punished for that. Like in, this person has been given the free will to act as they want, whether they want to choose the good or the bad, which is why Allah sent messengers. So you have to believe in both. You have to believe in both. You have to believe that Allah decreed everything whether this person is going to be from the people of the fire or the jannah lacking that does not mean the human being does not have the free will to choose the good or the bad you have been given the option whether you now want to choose the good or the bad is it's your, it's your hands it's what you earn it's your deeds and it is what is in your heart your intentions and it is what you want to meet Allah with what you desire to have in the hereafter and he then says, لا يملكون, لا يملكون لأنفسهم من الطاعة نفعا They are not able to benefit from obedience by themselves. لا يملكون لأنفسهم من الطاعة نفعا The human beings are not able to benefit from the ta'at and the, uh, the good deeds that they do by themselves. I.e. they do them, they fulfill them, hoping for the reward from Allah Azawajal. And they want to fulfill them because Allah had told them to fulfill them. And this is an obligation they perform and fulfill and carry out so that they meet the requirements that whatever Allah Azawajal wants from them. However, Allah Azawajal from His mercy connected the good deeds and He attached them to something good, a beneficial outcome, something that will benefit the human being. So if you do good, you'll be forgiven. Allah Azza wa will reward you with Jannah. He could have easily said, Allah Azza wa could have easily said, you have to do it. You have nothing in the hereafter. And if you don't do it, I'm going to punish, me, punish you for that. However, the athar and the effect of these good deeds that a person does is something which Allah Azza wa from his generosity and his kindness and his mercy has written down in the books. And he informs the human beings. He gives them the glad tidings, the good news that if you do them and you fulfill, you carry out these good deeds, then you will have Jannah. If you don't do it as a warning, then you're going to end up in hellfire or you're in danger of being punished for that. <coughs> And they don't find themselves being able to prevent from themselves the disobedience. وَلَا يَجِدُونَ إِلَىٰ صَرْفِ الْمَعْصِيَةِ عَنْهَا دَفْعًا A person cannot prevent from themselves the ma'asiyah when we talk about the irada of Allah. So if a person falls into a sin, we say Allah decreed it, لكن this person had the free will to leave it. لكن at the end of the day it's a qadr. It's something which Allah Azawajal has decreed to happen and to pass. طيب. خلق الخلق بمشيئته من غير حاجة كانت به. He created the human be uh, the creation. He created the creation بمشيئته with his مشيئة with his will. من غير حاجة كانت به. Without any need for the creation, he does not need them. He does not benefit from the ibadah. He does not gain anything from the ibadah. He is not in need of their worship. He is not in need of them venerating and glorifying Allah. He is self-sufficient, as we said, as summit. It means he's self-sufficient and sufficient enough to meet the needs of his creation. So Allah Azawajal is the one that creates everything for a reason, to test us. So the Muslim believes in two things, Al-Qadr, you have to believe in Al-Qadr and all of its forms, 
and Al Qadr has pillars. It has pillars. From the pillars of Al Qadr is that you have to believe that Allah has knowledge over everything. And he had knowledge that this would occur. You'd be sitting here today, he had that knowledge even before the action took place or the incident occurred or that event came about. He had that knowledge. Number two, Al Kitabah. He wrote it down in the Law Al Mahfuf that this is going to take place. Can anything change what's in the Law Al Mahfuf? It's there and Allah Azza wa Jalla has written it and it will come. Like there are things that can change it. Like what? Like dua. The qadr can be changed with dua. A person, for example, giving uh, sadaqah that can also change. And so on, as the Prophet tells us, like in, generally speaking, qadr is there to take place and it's going to happen. And Allah Azawajal decrees it and he does it how he wants. Uh, okay. The third one, or the third pillar is al mashia Allah wanting it to happen. So he, after he has the knowledge and he writes it down, he has to will, he has to will for this to happen. He has to want it. And he then creates the action. So our actions are created. You praying, coming, sitting, all of that are created. And the delay for that is, Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'amaloon. Allah created you and whatever you do. It's in the hands of Allah, al-khalq. So inshallah ta'ala, we'll move on from that. That's Al-Qadr. Two people or two uh, sects or two groups of people oppose the Aqeedah of the Prophet and the Sahaba and Ahl Sunnah when it comes to Al-Qadr. The first group are Al-Jabariyyah. They're known as Al-Jabariyyah. They say that the servant is compelled to do what they want and they have no choice, no free will. They do whatever they uh, they um, do because they cannot prevent that from hap or stop that from happening. The second group are those that are known as Al Qadriya, and they say that there is no Qadr. They deny and reject Al Qadr in its totality. They say there's no Qadr. Everything is created by the human being, and we do. And Allah only comes to know after we fulfill that. And this is, of course, they're both incorrect. And the Muslim has to believe that Al-Qadr is something which Allah decrees. But also the human being has the free will to do what they want, whether good or bad. Okay. The next few lines are about Al-Imanu Bil-Malaika. وَخَلَقَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ جَمِيعًا لِطَاعَتِهِ Allah Azawajal created all of the creations for his obedience. He created them. Remember we said that Allah does not benefit from the obedience of the human beings. Like he needs this soul so that he may test them and test us. So the angels are a creation of Allah and they never disobey Allah. They are always in a state of worship, always worshipping Allah, drawing closer to Allah. They never commit any sins and they are in a state, continuous state of glorification venerating Allah, exalting Him, praying to Him. The Prophet ﷺ describes to us that the angels are created from light. And they have no free will. They can, do not have the choice to disobey Allah. They have to always obey Allah. And they obey and they... Uh, he وسلم, tells us that the, in the heavens there is not a single place that a person can put their four fingers, except that there is a malak, an angel, making sujood in that place. So this is how many they are, and he also tells us how many they are. That he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, mentions above the Kaaba, the place adjacent to the Kaaba, like in the heavens, there are seventy thousand angels that perform tawaf every day. This is an authentic hadith. And those seventy thousand, when they leave, the next seventy thousand come the next day. They never return. From the day Allah created the world until the day of judgment. So their, num their number is 
very big. Only Allah knows as well. We have to believe that. وَجَبَلَهُمْ عَلَى عِبَادَتِهِ And he made them naturally inclined to his worship. جَبَلَهُمْ i.e. they're naturally inclined to it. Choose, i.e. they don't have the choice. This is something... I think you're referring to the mm -hmm. Correct? Okay, this ayah, uh, the angels, they're pure, yes, correct. I.e., they have their ma'asumin. Allah gave them that asma, they're infallible. Okay, they don't commit sins. Right? Um, uh, whether th this ayah, as for the ayah, it refers to, the scholars say that, it can either be the angels that Allah is referring to, or those that are in a state of purity, i.e. they're not in a state of minor or major ritual impurity, i.e. when Allah uh, talks about the Qur'an. في كتاب مكنون لا يمسه إلا المطهرون. This preserved Quran, the only ones that touch it and are allowed to touch are those that are purified. As for whether this is referring to the angels, yeah, and some of the scholars have said that yes, yeah, like they are purified, correct, from committing sins. وجبلهم على عبادته فمنهم ملائكة بقدرته للعرش حاملون فمنهم ملائكة بقدرته للعرش حاملون. From those are, or from them are angels who, بقدرته with the power of Allah للعرش حاملون. They carry the arsh, the throne of Allah. They carry it. How do they carry it? Allah knows. Does Allah want need them to carry it? He does not. لكن they are مذللون. I.e. they are uh, in a state of submission to Allah and this is a form of ibadah for them and Allah that commanded them to carry the arsh, their throne and the delil for that is from the Quran uh, those that carry the, the throne they exalt Allah and they seek the forgiveness of Allah and they exalt Allah so this is uh, from their sifat and their descriptions that they carry their throne of Allah and they are always glorifying Allah subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, pray, praying to Allah, making mention of Allah's name at all times. And a group of them carry the throne, uh, they mention Allah's name near the arsh of Allah, near the throne of Allah, they yusabbihun, they glorify Allah. They glorify. Yusabbihun al layla wal nahara la yafturun. They glorify Allah day and night and they don't get tired, they don't get exhausted. They always in a state of worship. Allah Azawajal tells us that they are always in a state of worship. La yafturun. They never get tired from that. So in istakbaru fil ladin yusabbihun al layla wal nahara if the humans and the jinn reject and deny or they uh, now are stubborn or arrogant enough to leave off worshipping Allah, then Allah does not need them. There are those that worship Allah day and night and they don't get tired. Okay. And others from them, with the praise of Allah, they venerate Him. They glorify and they venerate Allah Azawajal, meaning they make mention of Him with good things. Allah Azawajal is Al-Qaddus, Al-Rahim, Al-Rahman. They praise Allah Azawajal. وَاسْطَفَى مِنْهُمْ رُسُلًا إِلَىٰ رُسُلِهِ And from them He chose messengers, i.e. from the angels He chose messengers that carry His message to the human messengers, like Jibreel alayhi salam. He carried the message from Allah. He carried the revelation from Allah to the Prophet And he was trusted with that. And from them are those 
that carry out his commands and of course all of them carry out his commands like in some of them have been given specific tasks like the one that is responsible for bringing down the rain and he makes sure that angel as the Prophet ﷺ tells us that every drop of rain has to reach its place that Allah had record, uh, written down or recorded in the book Allah al Mahfuz. That drop, if it's for Manchester, Masai, near Masjid Salam, that particular spot, then it has to go there. That angel makes sure that it drops there. If it's for another country, it goes there. طيب. This is his job and he's been tasked with that. What about all of the subhanAllah? The you know, sometimes we have a flooding and it rains for many days or many months or we have tsunamis or we have uh, hurricanes or all of these things. How do the angels make sure that this happened? Lazarjil has trusted them with this and with his power he has given them the ability to fulfill this task in the manner he wants it to be fulfilled. From them are those that are responsible for the gates of hellfire, like Malik. Malik is responsible for the gates of hellfire. From those are those that hold back the hellfire as it's about to, when it rages and wants to, destroy uh, or because it's so angry and raged with those that have been disobeying Allah on the Day of Judgment. These own angels hold it back. And Allah Azawajal says, well, yeah, uh, He says in an ayah, in Sa'ala Sa'ilu bi'adhaabi waqi'a lil kafirin li salahu dafi'a min Allahi dil ma'adij ta'aruju al-mala'ikat wal-ruh ilayhi fi yawmin kana miqdaruhu khamsina alfa sana fasbir sabran jameela What was the ayah? That the angels hold back the hellfire. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, actually mentions in a hadith that 70,000 angels will be holding the hellfire on the day of judgment. And these 70,000 angels, will, each one of them will have a robe that they are holding firm onto so that it, they don't let go of this hellfire. So this is by the power of Allah. From those angels are the angels that are trusted with breathing the soul into the hum, human or the embryo when it's in the mother's womb. From them are those that are trusted with the wahi like Jibri. And from them they have of course different jobs. The one that blows the trumpet and Allah gives them that order and he's got it in his hand as the Prophet says close to his mouth waiting for that command to come so that he can blow it and everything comes to an end. So the angels have been given different tasks. Then the next one, inshallah, the next sentence is about the creation of Adam and the test he went through and the reason why Allah let that happen and why Allah decreed that Adam would disobey him. ثم خلق آدم بيده وأسكنه جنته And then Allah created. So which one comes first, the creation of the angels or the or Prophet Adam? So we mentioned number one. Uh, the ulu of Allah Azawajal, the sifat of Allah, and this is the essence of Allah Azawajal had this before everything came into existence, before anything came into existence, Allah had this, these characteristics and these attributes are part of Allah Azawajal. And then after that, he decreed, he, sorry, he rose over the throne, after the creation of the heavens and the earth. He then decreed everything that would take place before they even came to existence. He then created the angels. So this is in a chronological order, you see. He created the angels. He then created Adam in Jannah. He made the place that Adam resides, the Jannah, with the angels. He created Adam with his hands, with his hand. مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ لِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيَّ That's the evidence for that. The people of innovation reject that and they say that Allah did not create Adam with his hands. This doesn't mean the literal hand, i.e. the limb. Like in the Quran is telling us, he said بِيَدَيَّ And they interpret this as being the qudra, the ability to do that. 
and Allah could have easily said that he created it with his ability the Qudra. so this is again distorting the meaning of the ayah and Allah does not want that <coughs> hmm? did we call it a uh, the hand, the actual hand, yeah, it's a limb. For Allah, whether we should say limb or just say hand, maybe just say hand because Allah does not call it limb. Yeah, but when we refer to the human being, they are limbs. The limbs are used for different tasks, like your foot, you walk with them, your hands, you use them to catch and you know to carry out the work. As for Allah, it's a hand, so maybe stick to what's mentioned in the Quran. And خلق آدم بيده وأسكنه جنته. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that He created Adam with His hand. وأسكنه جنته. And He made him reside in Jannah. وقلنا يا آدم مسكن أنت وزوجك الجنة. He was in Jannah. That was His place of residence. وقبل ذلك للأرض خلقه. And before that He created the earth for him as a place. So He knew that Adam would. Disobey him and then he would be taken out of Jannah and he would be on this earth and his progeny will live there and that's the permanent place of residence until the day of judgment. So, uh, believe before we inshallah ta'ala move on, we have to understand that believing in the angels and their different tasks and having that holistic belief about them, but also believing their different tasks and each one of them is part of Iman. It's part of the faith system the Muslim has and you have to believe in them. If you say there are no angels, then your Iman is invalid. Allah came to them, He brought them into existence for a reason. Just like He created Adam for a reason. Before that, before Adam was made to live in Jannah, Allah created the earth for him. ثم سلط عليه نه ونهاه عن شجرة قد نفذ قضاؤه عليه بأكلها. الله عز وجل gave him a command and he commanded him and he told him and he prohibited him from eating from a tree, a particular tree. عن شجرة قد نفذ قضاؤه عليه بأكلها. a شجرة and a tree that Allah Azawajal had already preordained that he would eat from. He told him not to eat from that, to test him. So you see, the Qadr is there, but Allah Azawajal gave him the free will. Could Adam have stopped that from happening? No, he could not. Because Allah wanted to take him out of Jannah. So can we say that because Adam did not have a free will, we don't have a free will? No, we can't say that. Because Allah Azawajal gave us the free will. Adam had the free will in Jannah, like him because Shaitan kept him and you know led him uh, to eat from that. He had no choice, and Shaitan came with excuses. And Allah planned to bring Adam into this world. As for the progeny and the offspring of Adam, we have the free will, right? Uh, and then he says, Allah tested him with what he forbade and prohibited him from from, eat, i.e. from eating from that tree eating from that tree ثم سلط عليه عدوه فأغواه عليه عليها Allah tested him with his enemy the, the shaytan and he led him astray and he beautified it for him and of course Adam repented Allah Azza wa Jal accepted his repentance like in at that particular moment Adam Disobeyed. Adam Allah says, because this is the human nature, that Adam disobeyed. Like he repented to Allah immediately and Allah forgave him. So we cannot say that Adam, maybe it's not the best or a good way to describe that action to say that Adam disobeyed Allah. He fell into that error and then repented to Allah. Next, Allah accepted his repentance. He was then taken out of Jannah because of that. وَجَعَلَ أَكْلَهُ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ سَبَبًا And he made a sabab, he made this a reason or a cause for him to be taken out of Jannah and sent to the earth so that he can live there. Uh, and he then says, فَمَا وَجِدَ إِلَى تَرْكِ أَكْلِهَا سَبِيلًا He did not find a way to avoid eating from it. You see, 
he did not find the weed from eating from it. So he was tested with that and he fell into that. And Allah Azawajal decreed that and he then uh, came to the earth. وَلَا عَنْهُ لَهَا مَذْهَبًا He didn't find a way to uh, avoid that. Because Salah is near, inshallah, we'll stop here and we'll carry from أَعْمَالُ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ So, alhamdulillah, we have covered the first part, so the beginning of the creation and the sifat of Allah and the qadr and the um, Allah Azawajal ascending above the heavens and his ulu believing in angels, the creation of Adam and inshallah ta'ala we will aim to finish it in the next two lessons.